Hello, welcome to Studio Pixel. Lights in 3ds Max Chapter 2. In this chapter, we'll go further to intensity, color, and attenuation rollout of the standard light system. Now, I have already created a Omni light, a teapot, and a plane in this scene. And by selecting the lights, uh, go to the intensity, color, and attenuation. The first option you'll see is a multiplier. Now, what is multiplier? Multiplier is the intensity of the light. Now, if we by default value is one, and if you render this, you'll see the light has been eliminated. Uh, sorry, the scene has been eliminated uh, through this light. And if I increase this uh, multiplier, say two, you can immediately see the effect in the viewport and also at the render view. And if you increase, it will just uh, burn it out. So this is the multiplier. This is the intensity of any light you created I'm just use giving an example of the uh, of the Omni lights I will explain for the other lights also in the later, later chapters okay so just beside the multiplier option you'll find the lights uh, color now this is very interesting because in generally uh, we have our own white light uh, which will actually show you the textures of the you know objects but you can uh, change the color of the lights you want if you want to because uh, this is very necessary when you are using some fake lights or any kind of cartoony kind of lights it, it will very very important that you change your colors accordingly or if you want to put any kind of mood or something not uh, every time that we do in the uh, you know CG uh, you can do it in the color correction section in the post production also but that depends it's absolutely up to you how you are going to plan your work workflow and the uh, entire uh, pipeline so <coughs> uh, just uh, say I'm using a yellow tint into the light you'll find this is there is a uh, you know there is a, a small amount of uh, light differences not in on this plane but on this uh, uh, object now how we can uh, understand these changes in uh, while doing lightings uh, this is very important so uh, <coughs> go to the rendering menu and you will found an options called RAM player this is very very important for the lighting artist now what is the RAM player do it just uh, load this uh, RAM player you, you have found two options A and B now just import a uh, the last image into the A or uh, just uh, I've just uses the tint uh, of uh, yellow so I'll just uh, okay I'll just import this uh, option this image into channel B I'll just hit OK this is our uh, right uh, current uh, render and I'll just change it to the white and I'll just render it and I also call this into the the last render into the channel A now you can see the difference between these A and B by dragging this line. You can see this is small triangle out there. Just to click and drag, you can see this is the uh, actually the left one is the one which is uh, you know actually been uh, rendered with uh, white light, and the right one is actually been you know rendered with uh, a bit yellowish tint. So that's how you can see the difference between these two so this is very very helpful for the for the lighting artist to to load these two two three images to, it's not so not three images it's only only two images and you can compare this uh, two lightings uh, while you are uh, you know uh, working on some projects or something so <coughs> that's how we can uh, manage this thing so I'll uh, I hope you can understand this uh, tint uh, light colors kind of uh, things so just uh, exit the RAM player. Okay, fine. So now uh, moving to the DK. Now, next option is the DK. Now, what is DK? Now, DK is uh, you know responsible for the uh, you know uh, you know declining the intensity of the light intensity of the light from according to the dis distance now if I hit uh, the type of DKR3 one is 
uh, none, which is no decay. Another one is inverse decay, and another one is inverse square decay. Now, if you're talking about the real-time calculations, inverse square is the important one. Now, how we can do, uh, you know, calculate this, uh, understand this inverse and inverse square? Let's see uh, how the decay actually works. Now, say here is my light and here is my object so there is a distance between these two there's an object with uh, from the light source now the thing is that the amount of distance the light covers it will decrease its intensity let's suppose this distance is 2 that means the light if the light starts with an intensity of 2 it will end up at 0 now if that is a, that is an inverse decay directly you know inversely proportion to the distance now if i if the light will start at 4 it will come to 2 is exactly half now if i that is inverse inverse sorry okay now if I say inverse square inverse square then the same thing will happen exactly if I you know use 4 intensity it will become 0 because it's only traveling 2 but it will uh, decrease the amount of light for 2 squared which is equals to 4 that means the 4 will reduced to 0 but uh, the inverse square is the actual calculation which what we see inside our you know, real world but that we can actually control in CG so there is two one that is none which is which means that it will travel to the infinity and it will never 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 come if you if you just uh, create an object over here I told you that uh, uh, the the amount is also depends on the angle now if you see just uh, you know rotate it up you can see the the light is still traveling over there also but if we select the light and I'll just uh, go to the inverse option now you'll see the light has been already been dimmed now how this things going on now it's absolutely on the distance now the moment you switch on the decay now this is very interesting you have to understand this very very carefully because this is a very you know useful option for the lights now if I use inverse decay the moment I switch to the inverse you will see this is fair coming up it's a gizmo kind of thing come up now what this gizmo actually do and this is actually the gizmo of the decay which will start from this you know uh, area now this is the gizmo which is responsible that the uh, the decay will start after you know after uh, this circular or the the spherical area now the objects that are outside of this sphere is going to calculate it according to the decay now see if I increase the size of the uh, you know the decay sphere you can see the amount of light is increasing because this light uh, sorry this object is outside the uh, uh, decay region and if I again move move it further you can see the light is actually you know uh, uh, light is actually gradually decreasing but if I move this in a very bigger way just to cover all the whole area and if I change the you know the position it won't affect the light which is actually uh, putting over this object now why this is happening because this area inside this uh, spherical area the light is fixed the multiplier which is one is fixed it won't affect 
anything regarding the decay because the decay starts point is exactly outside of this sphere now that we have to understand very well now if we you know decrease the you know decay area decay uh, stars area you can see the lights has been uh, just to hit render and you can see the lights has been fixed within this area but after coming out of this area you can see the lights has been gradually decreased lights is more or lesser than this this uh, this much of light but still again the area is actually depends on if I hit zero now what will happen if I hit zero the light is uh, started to you know decrease immediately after emitting so I have to increase my multiplier the or the intensity if you hit 10 still it's not covering the distance but if I put this near the light and still it's not sufficient so I have to use 50 maybe no still not there I uh, maybe 100 no, it's still not there oops it's not still there maybe I have to use zero. Oh, so sorry accidental I just made the very zero okay now I have to put at least one from one uh, sorry okay now you can see that it will actually uh, because I, I just accidentally put it to the absolutely zero because that that doesn't that doesn't mean same because uh, the decay is not uh, even calculating starting its calculation now if you see the amount of oops sorry the amount of lights is actually getting to it I'm using thousand multiplier which is huge I mean if you if you move switch off the light well now you can see how much uh, I'm using it's huge but uh, the moment I increase the you know uh, the moment I increase the oh uh, you know the decay type to inverse it will it will show you that uh, the amount of light which is getting out of this uh, light is very very low though I have uh, you know increased the number of multiplier so the inverse is also depends that the decay inverse inverse decay is also important how we are from where we are starting the uh, the amount of decay from the light and also the multiplier because uh, I need to understand it also because um, if I don't uh, put the uh, minimum amount of multiplier the light won't show so that is a very tricky one that you, you just uh, combine these two three options together and you just uh, eliminate your scene so I hope you and okay now if I go to the to s say the understanding of the lights you now if we say the if here is the intensity sorry intensity of the light if you see the graph and this is the distance in the inverse option you will see this kind of gradual decretion whereas in the inverse square if I just uh, use inverse square see this kind of graph which means it's gradually it start decreasing very fast and then it will just uh, and go on so that's how the inverse and inverse square decay actually uh, works if we it uh, inverse square it will see you just gradually see this uh, more light has been wapped out inverse square is very important because uh, this uh, options are very useful while using a huge scene or uh, you know a large amount of uh, objects are out there and you really don't want every light will affect so that's where you just uh, work with your inverse decay or decay uh, or things and the similar thing also happened to the attenuation part we'll 
uh, cover this thing into the next chapter so hope you understand and thank you very much